For more great content, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. He is arguably the greatest esports competitor the world has ever seen. Like, even though I only have a mat on the floor, I think he's in the bed. Oh, Faker may be in trouble here, Death Mark tries to clean it up for Ryu. Oh, look at the cleanse, look at the moves! Faker, what was that? He helped build and define esports as we know it today. Under turrets, Wolf coming in. Double six, they get the flash from Nogne. Faker comes in. He's got the ult, he's got the kill. Beautiful, beautiful Faker. game from SKT. He's considered a god amongst men. Saving the break for now. They got two already. Bang is hiding. He's coming. Bang looking to come in. Here comes your initiation. They're right there. Oh, oh my god. Faker Shockwave will find them all. And SKT with a hell of a response. He is the one and only Lee Faker Sung Hyuk nine-time domestic champion and three-time world champion in League of Legends. But even gods aren't immune to the march of time. And after making history with his third world championship victory in 2016, the unkillable Demon King has slowly been declining, failing to produce results on both international and domestic stages. Against SKT, they got it. Faker is destroyed. But in 2021, Faker has transitioned from being the star player to a mentor and leader of a team of rookie talent. A team he managed to lead straight to Worlds. One inning game, who Ten cares? Seconds. Here comes Kana. We're just gonna be bursting down everybody. And life is gonna try it so much for your combo. You don't have anything against Teddy in this game, nothing. As T1 are gonna take down the Nexus and they will make it to the finals of the LCK, and they will secure their world spot. This is the rise, fall, and rise again of Faker. Faker first came to prominence in 2013, creating a buzz for himself even before going pro in League of Legends. That's when we started hearing like rumors about him. Like there was this, this guy on solo queue that was just insanely good and like, what team was going to pick him up and like, you know, there was a lot of hype surrounding him before he joined the league. And, you know, when you hear stuff like that, you're like, all right, well, solo Q superstar, you know, that that can mean that can mean he's good. That can mean he's good in solo Q, right? There's a big difference between being good on the ladder and being good in a professional setting with professional teammates and all that kind of stuff. In his first professional match, Faker staked his claim in the Korean scene by making Ambition, one of the best mid laners in Korea at the time, look like an amateur. I was curious to see how well Captain Jack would do in this lane because he's been typically uh, a relatively weak lane. Whoa, whoa, Ambition! What? Faker just executes Ambition in that mid lane. In his rookie season, Faker and his team, then known as SK Telecom T1K, demolished the competition. They took first in Champions Summer 2013 and won the Season 3 World Championships, all without breaking a sweat. SK Telecom are just rolling through. The Nexus turrets are potentially going to go down. This could be a 20-minute game for SK Telecom. They will be the Season 3 World Champions here at the Staples Center. This unprecedented success made Faker and the rest of T1K instant stars. But in the following 2014 season, the overall competition in Korea had leveled up significantly. In the end, Faker would be kept from Worlds by Najin White Shield and the eventual champions, Samsung White. And you know what? I think this is not only going to be the game, but this is going to be Samsung White with a resounding 3-0 over SKTK to take that second spot going to Worlds 2014. But in 2015, any doubt about the team was quickly put to rest. Faker, along with Bang, Wolf, Bangi, and Marin, formed the all-star roster of the newly unified SK Telecom T1 and crushed both the spring and summer splits of the LCK. 
He's going for the next one. They're delaying it. And Bang is going to win champion summer for his team, SK Telecom. 3-0 in the spring season, 3-0 in the summer season. This is the year of SKT. What a dominating performance. Then they swept worlds without dropping a single game before the grand finals. Crew literally threw everything they could at Faker there, and they didn't even hit him. Nope. SK Telecom looking to take down the final Nexus turrets. It does not look good for Kuro and his team. Ku Tigers are falling. SKT will be your first ever two-time world champions. This new roster was an unstoppable force. And in 2016, with the addition of former Najin player Duke in the top lane, Faker and SK Telecom T1 pulled off the impossible, winning Worlds for the third time. This time goes between the goalposts. Hubei's under threat. Deadly flourish as Samsung are under pressure. This is buying time for those super minions to pour in. Kick around. Crown's able to flash so he doesn't get caught. But Kube's down. And it's a war of attrition. They're just waiting for the oh. them in a fight. Duke flashes forward, chomps down to kill Crown. SK Telecom have got two. Make that three kills. The curtain call is a fitting end to the world championship as Samsung Galaxy are being dove under their tower. SK Telecom have over Overcome every challenge. They are the undisputed best team in the world. The SKT reign continues. They win their third world championship. Faker had a huge hand in creating the ultimate League of Legends dynasty. But with Bangi, the only other original member of the squad, leaving before the 2017 season, he would stand alone in defending what they had built together. The Fall. In 2017, the LCK's regular season went exactly as fans expected. T1 swept the first split, and Faker held the throne as the greatest player League had ever seen. But when Worlds finally came around, and T1 were looking for their fourth overall and third consecutive championship, everything went wrong. And Samsung Galaxy pushed mid first. See the flash old left. They've caught Faker. They've got a CC. The mid laner is down. The unkillable Demon King has done Ruler's his life. As Ruler stays in, life stealing in the back line. They found more as Hootie does not have a way out. Pops the Yolk, but he has no exit route. Two more autumn will kill him down, but he gets to run away. They twitch to their aggro. They knock down Wolf instead. 5v3 in mid. In the moment of truth, they flash on Faker and they take out the heart of SK Telecom. Faker had no flash when the fight started. They knew that, so they used everything to kill him. A game winning pick, a championship winning pick for Ruler. That might be the flash R that signals the end of the SKT dynasty. There are no turrets. It is five versus three. Hooney, do you have what it takes to win the game? Big certainly does not. Ruler on the Nexus. The upset is complete as the kills come through. The SKT dynasty is over. your 2017 World Champions. Faker was devastated by the loss, and that hit to his self-esteem was evident throughout the 2018 season. Trying to come in here, and they're looking to end the game right now. Waiting for that second minion wave to come in. The go button is so obvious. Oh, they are, are able to get it's the, the go button. button. There it is, they knock a Faker in the back line, and there's nothing he can do. Tall, not able to do enough damage to the 2-0 victory for Griffin. We'll be able to do a lot of damage to this, but it's still going to be a smite up. It goes Susan, and there's the last breath as well. Immediately, Blank is destroyed, and they've got an Elder Drake now to do so much of the work. Faker will be taken down to the GA as Tal, just running for the hills. Not a lot that he can do here on this top side, but at least a couple more of SKT's members did escape. As we go back to this game, still not 100% certain who will win is. Oh. This is going to be a lot of damage. Faker, yeah, so much damage. Sonia's going to go out. He's going to have to try to get out of here. Just for good measure, another redemption coming through. But Umpty chases in. One more hit. Him. He takes him down. The solo kill from Umpty, not even losing the Guardian Angel. After a lackluster regular season, SKT T1 failed to claim a spot at Worlds. For the second time in his career, Faker would be on the sidelines for the biggest tournament 
of the year. It was close here in five games, but Gen G, they're able to pull it out. And everyone at the next Sun Arena and you in the chat were there when the dream died for SK Telecom T1. In the wake of the 2018 season, the makeup of T1 changed dramatically, with only Effort and Faker resigning. High profile players like Clid, Teddy Khan, and Mata were brought in to fill out the roster, with Faker positioned as team captain. That should be all but lights out. Game one looking to be even faster than game two. SKT look on another level, just like Griffin did yesterday. Mouth watering is that matchup, but for this one, where Freak could come as the last team to debut, they got things to work on. Maybe the Carthus on the shelf, and maybe the Carthus <laughs> in the death chamber. Well, they have a lot of damage. It is a very one-sided game at this point. And there it is, guys. SKT, the easy 2-0. These changes seem to bring T1 back to form. And during the 2019 regular season, Baker and his team remained at the top of the LCK. But at MSI, the cracks began to show when G2 Esports sent them home in the semifinals. G2 Esports have been gifted and donated a Baron from SKT. That's a dunk from one to death from below for the double, for the ace, for the Baron and the base. Falling short at MSI turned out to be a foreshadowing of things to come. At the 2019 World Championship, they once again fell before the might of G2 in the semifinals. The back end of that ultimate. Faker now steps forward. Faker now gets taken out. Faker is no. dead. Faker is dead. What was that? Ooh, he messes up the execution. Bates it out though. Clint had to go up into the air. And it doesn't matter if he messed it up because Clint is still going to go down. But Khan right to the backside. Caps goes golden. There's no one else to follow up. Khan's damage doesn't matter. The ulti comes out in such a close exchange. For now, they're winning, but Perks is coming in. This is his hero moment. If he wants to turn this fight in favor of team, this could be the game. He gets the fight moment. Faker is gone. Teddy's next on the list. There's no way he can duel Yasuo. Amada's coming in, but he's just walking into the meat grinder of Perks. Caught. Can he do it? Perks. Not enough. They've done it. They're going to G2. Caught. Can he get it done? He can't. The Vladimir. They can't do it. This is it. The greatest team in the history of League of Legends taken down by the greatest team Europe has ever produced. In 2020, T1 continued experimenting with new rosters, but they couldn't recapture the magic from the team's earlier glory days. Faker, though, continued to support his team in the most tangible way. ESPN can announce that Faker has resigned to T1 for three years, the maximum amount that Riot allows contracts to be. Along with that, though, Faker is now a part owner of T1 Entertainment and Sports. Included in that deal, they've discussed in their negotiations when Faker decides to retire in three, five, 10, 20 years, whenever he you know, hangs up his mouse and keyboard, he will move to a leadership position inside the company. But this new position did nothing to insulate Faker from roster changes. Going into August of 2020, Faker was benched in favor of a 17-year-old rising mid lane star, Closer. A move that the fan base didn't take well. It seems that T1, their staff, their players, their coaches, and I'm sure it's not only because of this benching, but probably a, a wide cause of which has resulted in death threats and very, very serious things being issued towards their team and staff, which has now prompted the CEO and T1 themselves to threaten back legal action. That is how bad some of these things that are being posted online about them or towards them are being. And that's how serious it is that the organization has now responded and threatened to legally pursue anyone who takes it to that level. And during the regional finals, T1 found themselves once again barred from worlds by the likes of Gen G Esports. Ultimate is down from Ruler, but he doesn't seem to care. The chipping comes in and Gumiusi is in the front line for no reason. Goes down, not able to stand up to the power that is Genji. Really nice combo, Shockwave coming in, but it doesn't look like it's gonna matter. They get pulled in and Genji will be making it to the World Championship of 2020 with the 3-0 sweep over T1. Absolute domination here. This was rock bottom for Faker. For the last four years, the weight of being the star player, the god, the unkillable demon king had been resting on his shoulders. And in the end, he couldn't reach the heights he'd seen in his first few years as a pro. 
It was time for a change. To T1's roster, yes, but more importantly, in Faker himself. The Rise Again. There really hasn't been a time where Faker has been pushed or it's looked like he's going to get pushed out of the picture, except 2021, where it did feel like after another struggle bust in 2020, it did seem like 2021 might be the year where Faker gave up, I don't even want to say his throne, but gave up his his seat, his, his, you know, the head of the table role on SKT T1, now as they're called. In the spring of 2021, T1 began flexing their extended roster, with stage time being split in the mid lane between Faker and Closer. Closer is the prototypical hands are faster than his brain sometimes. And he was very raw, but it did seem like T1 was kind of, you know, slowly making that torch pass. And the fans were up in arms. Uh, you know, fans protested. There were like vans of signs on them uh, saying, why are you mistreating Faker? Faker is T1. He is the organization. He's a part owner of the organization. Why are you doing him so dirty? Competing for time this way had mixed results, and T1 ended the split 11 and 7. Though a positive score, it didn't elicit the confidence fans had been hoping for. As the summer split began, T1's performance was getting worse. It was time for T1 to go in a new direction. It became a conflict, right, where uh, T1, they were swapping their rosters all around, they were playing closer all the time, and then finally, against like 70% of the season, uh, the T1 ownership said bye to the coaching staff. Uh, Danny, who was the reigning world champion, said, uh, we are going to bring an inter interim coaching staff and we're going to trust in Faker and we're going to trust in this five-man roster that we believe in. Faker was once again at the center of an exceptionally green team. The top laner Kana and support player Karia were both only in their second year of pro play, and bot lane Gumayushi and jungler owner were in their rookie seasons. I don't know, it'll depend on how the games do go tonight, as here's the lineup for T1. Nothing changes on their side, which, you know, there's always discussions yeah. about the T1 rosters. In spring, it was like, why are you changing so much? And now in summer, it's like, well, are we really gonna see zero changes? And so far, it has been consistent in that way. T1 were full of potential, but it would be up to Faker to bring the most out of this young and hungry team. Let's see if they read this. Uh oh, Khan, you should have followed your buddy, the jungler, as in goes Faker, and well, <laughs> he does kind of a front flip into his death. Faker's playstyle had become more reserved, defensive, and ultimately selfless. Instead of being the explosive star that the team played around, he was emboldening his teammates and setting them up for success. I really do think that in 2021, Faker not only learned how to be, you know, kind of a, a leader, a captain, uh, you know, a, a shepherd of the youth, but I think he learned to have fun with it. I think even in defeat sometimes, you could see that he was really just having fun. And I don't think we've seen that often when Faker, when he loses or he doesn't, he's at the top of his game, he's angry at himself. He wants to be, he wants to be at the level he once was. But I think in 2021, we saw this new version of Faker where he just really loved the game and really loved playing with these young kids who kind of brought the fun back into him. And after you know so many years, it was really uh, great to see. But no matter how much fun he was having, in the end, he's still Faker. And Faker will always strive to be better. T1 had a 15-3 regular season and clinched out the regional finals against Hanwha Life Esports, securing their ticket to Worlds. With a relatively easy group stage lineup, it was probable that T1 would make it to the knockout stage, putting Faker tantalizingly close to a possible fourth Worlds victory. T1 showed up ready to fight, and Faker and his young guns quickly dismantled 100 Thieves and Detonation Focus Me. They came out of the group stage leading the pack over Edward Gaming. Kana 
one versus two. He's got the best item in the game, so he'll be absolutely fine. Scout as well is going to go golden, but the situation's far more dire for him as Faker will lock down the rise. A Destiny comes in a little bit mistimed on that rake, but T1 are going to push forward. Nexus turrets now fall, and they'll tie up their scoreline here at Worlds Groups with EDG. T1 steadily improved with every game they played at Worlds, but after eliminating Hanwha Life Esports in the quarterfinals, they were paired off against Damwon Kia, the 2020 champions and favorites to take the whole tournament. It's all been about T1 over the course of League of Legends, but the last few years have been about Dom1. You know, both in the LCK and internationally, they have been incredible. You know, T1 has so many titles to their name, but it's been five years since Faker has won a world championship, since T1 has won a world championship. It has been a while, and they are trying to reclaim that ultimate title. It was a battle for the ages. It was the reinvented old guard dynasty versus the new dominant force in Korea. And even though it was the semifinals, it felt like a match worthy of a world championship grand finals. Gale forced forward to find the kill. T1 prior nexus to the bearer of the Drake. Their Kana choice. TP behind him! But they want a little bit more action. Kana stepping forward. Predator coming in from Showmaker. He's zooming forward. If he hits Gamush with a full combo, he's going to be in trouble. There's no ultimate there to stop him. But Khan getting locked up. Khan, can he make it out of this one? The snare is there. Kana finishes the fight. T1 taking absolute control in these skirmishes. And now Showmaker, he's going to be in trouble. The knockback comes in. It's Clutch Owner running for the hills. But T1 getting everything they want. But one mistake from Gumiushi, one overstep, one Syndra stun hitting him could affect T1's team fight. If he gets locked down and the Zillion ult has to be used very early, it's dangerous. Drag, drag, locking up three. That's going to be the MF ult across the Not entire team. It's massive. The revive now coming through. Owner in the midst of everybody. The Gore Drinker is still doing massive, massive work. Showmaker goes gold, tries to buy a bit more time. Gumiushi, Baker, Karia, can they do it? It's a 4v3, but they're confident to try to turn it. Baker moving forward, but he can't get the damage down. Khan still Gumiushi, Gumiushi, flash it. Gumiushi, four shot. Wants to finish the job. Gumiushi can't win the fight. It's caught. On the backside, looking to finish off Baker, but the lockup from downtown will not connect. Catch of audience, not going to find a home. He arrives just in time and cleans up, and he's going to solo kill Baker. Oh, 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 Showmaker showing up here when it matters most. Game four, 6 0 1. You just cannot outplay a LeBlanc that is that fed. In the end, T1 pushed Damwon farther than anyone thought possible, taking them to an incredibly close game five. But this is where T1 and Faker's comeback story come to an end. In one massive last Elder Dragon team fight, T1 were wiped out. Everything being bet on this smite. Oh, no. goes to sleep. Kana now stepping forward. 3k getting lower. Kana dragon, going all the, the way trying to lock up the Nygma. Who's going to get it? No! In the end, it is Canyon. When it matters most, you will find this fight. Magumi Yushi standing strong on the backside. It does not matter. In the face of the Elder, Dawa Kia will wipe T1 off the map. They're going to TP top as well. They have the Elder Dragon. They have a wave. They have everything they need to go to the World Finals. And damn old legends and old legacies. Goodbye, Faker. Goodbye, T1. Hello, Damwon and Showmaker. But even as his hopes for another championship title were dashed, Faker had achieved something arguably greater. He led a group of young up-and-comers to their first worlds, and a result that anyone, even a former dynasty, would be proud of. Kind of, again, you know, gave you a good indication about what players he was going to be and, and what sort of, like, mentality he had in games, is that he was not going to be ruffled. Like, even, at, you know, the thing is, even when they no got knocked out of Worlds this year, you look at him after the game and he, he looks sad, but he's not devastated, right? He's, he's not, he's just kind of like, he's kind of nodding a little. He's like, all right, well, you know, this wasn't our year. You know, we came close, closer than we've come in a while, but it wasn't our year. And I think his just ability to sort of uh, have that poise. And although Faker may not be the same star he was early in his career, he has become a beacon to T1, helping them shine as bright as any champion.